last time I spoke to you, I suggested our doubts and defeats, despair and disappointment were a result of our failing to prioritise, our failure to put first things first. So often we fool ourselves and cause sorrow and pain unnecessarily. What the sun is to the solar system that our Creator and our Redeemer must be to us. He is first, last and best in any really successful life. You know there are only really two religions we think of all the divisions in Christianity, all the divisions in non-Christian faiths. We think there are so many of them. No, my friends, there are only two. Since the fall of man, most religions teach this. Be good and God will accept you. Keep the rules. Be holy and God will forgive your sins. That's the main religion of the world. Be good, everything will be okay. God will take you on. But there's a smaller religion, far more accurate. And it says this, come to God with empty hands, with a starving heart and offer to him the only remedy he has prescribed, the sacrificial Son of God. That's a minority religion. It's the only one that can bring real success. You don't have to be good to be saved. That great book, the Bible says, come just as you are. God will accept you with all your blemishes, all your flaws, all your follies. God will accept you just as you are, but he won't leave you just as you are. Reject any religion that puts its emphasis on our works our accomplishments. Accept that faith that says you were reconciled to God by the atoning death of Jesus Christ. The Pharisees came to Christ and they asked, what good things shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus said, this is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. See John chapter 6 verses 28 and 29. Wrong religion is all about all sorts of rules, all sorts of laws, and we never succeed in keeping them all, however much we try. Saul the Pharisee thought he was blameless because he tried to keep all the Jewish laws. But the day came when he said, I died when I saw the depths of the law, that it required perfect love, I died. He said, now I'm crucified with Christ. And Christ lives in me. But you who rely on law, you have fallen into great folly. You can never be acceptable to God by your law keeping. whole book of Galatians is about that and the book of Romans and you'll find it in Philippians and elsewhere in Scripture. We come to God because of what He has done, not because of what we can do. Only God has given away. Only heaven can be had for the asking. 
You don't have to be good to come to God. You come just as you are. But he won't leave you just as you are. He'll come into your heart. He'll come into your life. He'll change your loves. He'll live in you. And you will find rest and peace and joy and eternal life by the gladsome following of Christ. Paul in one of his letters said, Why did Israel miss out? Why did Israel reject their Messiah? He said, Because they thought that by keeping the law, they could win God to their side. But they never really kept it. You know, the law demands this do and you'll live. But the grace of the gospel says, live and you'll do. The law says, pay me what you owe me. The gospel says, I freely forgive you all. The law says, the soul that sins shall die. The gospel says, blessed is the one whose sin is forgiven, whose transgression is covered. The law shouts, cursed is everyone that doesn't continue in all the works of the law to do them. But the gospel says, blessed is whosoever comes to me and receives forgiveness full and free. The law says, make you a new heart. The gospel says, a new heart I'll give you. The law says, you must love God with all your heart. The gospel says, here is love. Not that we've loved God, but that he loved us and gave his son for the forgiveness of our sins. You can't be saved by trying to keep rules and regulations. You can only be saved by accepting as a gift salvation full and three. Jesus said, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life. Has it now? Need fear no condemnation for he has passed from death unto life. That's John 5 verse 25. That's the only way, accept it as a gift, however bad your past, whoever you are, whatever your condition. You know, the Bible uses symbols to convey truths to us. It calls false religion Babylon. It's remind us of the people that built the Tower of Babel, hoping to get to heaven hoping to make a great name for themselves. But they failed. They failed in both. We don't know the name of any of them. And they finished using mud and slime and the tower collapsed. You've heard of Jacob. He was born a twister and a rogue. He often cheated. But God came to him and showed him a ladder connecting heaven and earth a symbol of the Redeemer who would come, who would bridge the gap between us and God. And Jacob's heart was broken and he received a new name, Israel, overcomer. Dear friends, when you believe in Christ, the Bible says you're justified. That doesn't mean make right, except make right in the sense of your status. To justify in the Bible means to declare right, to impute righteousness to, to account or treat a person as though they were righteous. And you receive a righteousness that's 100%, but it's not in you, it's in your Saviour. You don't ever trust in yourself, not for a single moment. Faith is a receiving word, not a doing word. 
by faith we look to Christ. Whatever the storm, whatever the trouble. What do sailors do in a storm? They don't throw the anchor into the hole. They throw it into the vast ocean. And we're not to look to ourselves. That's like trying to balance a broom while you look at where the broom touches your finger. You can never do it that way. You must look up and up and up and then you can balance it. Faith is looking to Christ and receiving his gift of holiness full and free. That's the religion of what the Bible calls the holy city, God's Jerusalem, heaven itself. There's no other way. One interest must prevail. One subject must swallow up every other. The sweetest melody of human lips that Christ is our righteousness. Receive it, believe it, and you'll have the only success that God counts as true success.